Hi guys, my name is Zach and this is GG Fistbump. In this video, we'll be talking about how to play PS2 games via a USB flash drive using a PS2 memory card with Fortuna Project and OPL. This method, by the way, works on all PS2 Slim models. So, how does it work? Let's find out. But first, roll the intro. If you're new to my channel, it would really help if you would click on subscribe, then hit on that notification bell to stay up to date with my latest videos. I do gaming related reviews, tutorials, documentaries, and gameplays. Okay, so let me start off with a few FAQs. First, what is Fortuna Project and how does it differ from Free Macboot? Well, to simply explain it, Fortuna Project is a homebrew launcher for PS2 models. It's a bunch of files installed inside a PS2 memory card which allows you to run your own homebrew applications. One popular homebrew app for the PS2 is Open PS2 Loader or OPL which if you load it up allows you to play PS2 games that are placed inside a USB flash drive that is plugged in your PS2 console. Free MacBoot in essence is like Fortuna Project, a homebrew launcher installed inside a PS2 memory card which also lets you run homebrew applications. This soft mod has actually been in existence for several years now, while Fortuna Project only got popularized starting 2020. There is however some limitations with Free MacBoot. While Free MacBoot works for all PS2 FAT models, it only works with PS2 Slim models produced in the second quarter of 2008 and below, which comes with the model number SCPH9000 with an 8B date code and older. Meaning, for those newer PS2 Slim models, Free MacBoot won't simply work. With the newer Fortuna project, however, this soft mod will work on all PS2 Slim models with support for the FAT model coming very soon. Another common question is that can I still turn back my PS2 to normal and play DVD discs once I have Fortuna project? To answer, yes you can. Again, Fortuna project is basically a bunch of files installed in your PS2 memory card. If you don't have it plugged in, then your PS2 would just boot normally. You can still use a memory card without FreeMac boot or Fortuna project and place your saves there. So in relation to that, if you have a Fortuna project memory card, can you still use a separate memory card for your saves? Well, yes, that's actually advisable. While you can actually save on your Fortuna project memory card because there's still space, we'll be messing with Fortuna project a lot. So, just to be safe and that you'll be free from any corrupt data, it would be better to just save on your second PS2 memory card. And yes, your saves do go into your PS2 memory card, not to your USB flash drive. Next, how exactly do you get a PS2 memory card with Fortuna Project? Well, while Fortuna Project would work on all PS2 Slim models, when it comes to the installation of the program, not all PS2s can do it. If you want to learn the needed requirements for installation, as well as how to install Fortuna Project yourself, please watch my video, How to Install Fortuna Project Plus OPL for PS2 USB Games Using Free DVD Boot. But, if you don't want to go through the hassle of installation, or if you don't have the necessary requirements, memory cards with Fortuna Project installed are readily available online in e-commerce websites for a small fee, like in eBay in the US, or in Lazada in the Philippines. Some Facebook marketplaces may also have them like PS2 MacBook Philippines which sells Fortuna Project memory cards for as low as 10 US dollars or about 500 pesos for the 8 megabyte card. So if you now have a PS2 memory card with Fortuna Project installed as well as a USB flash drive, let's head over to your PC and I'll be showing you how to set up your USB flash drive and put your PS2 games. Okay, for your USB flash drive, all you have to do is to format it to FAT32. However, the maximum file size that you can add to a FAT32 flash drive is 4.29GB. For games that are 4.3GB and up, you will need a different process from what I'll show in this video. Basically, for the bigger games, you need to break them into 1GB chunks through a program called USB Util. 
I'll post a separate video for games over 4.29 gigabytes, but it is possible to convert multiple files when selecting games over 4 gigabytes. As for this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to place games that are less than 4.29 gigabytes. Now I won't be giving direct links to games as I wouldn't want this video to get flagged, but it's just easy to find them through Google. I mean, just go and use the keywords PS2 ISO download and check the first few links that would pop up at the search results. Personally, I use ROM Hustler, ROMs Mania, CD Romance, and pretty much these first few websites. Just remember that FreeMacBoot reads .iso files. Just search for the game that you like and click on download. Usually, when you download ISO files, it will be in .7z, .zip, or .rar, so you will be needing a program to extract the file. I use WinRAR, which is a free program. Link on the description below. Now, I get a lot of these questions in the comments. For some people, they say that they don't have these image icons and instead have another RAR file inside. But in fact, it can already be the ISO itself. That's because you associated ISOs with RAR files, so their icons appear as RAR. You can either uncheck this in your WinRAR settings, or you can just check the properties or file extension of the file inside. Sometimes you may have downloaded a PS2 game that has bin and queue files inside, instead of an ISO. Well, all you have to do is get a bin queue converter to ISO like WinISO. But it's best to just get an ISO file to save yourself the hassle of converting. I have a few games prepared already, Marvel vs. Capcom 2, Shadow of the Colossus, and Tekken Tag. So just click on the compress file and extract it on your computer. In this case, I'll just place it in a folder in my D drive. Now that you have everything extracted, go to your USB stick, right-click on it, and create a new folder. Name it DVD. Drag your ISO files inside this folder in order for the PS2 to recognize it. Once that is done, safely eject your flash drive. Insert your Fortuna project memory card and your USB flash drive into your PS2. With everything in place, power on your console. Now when it comes to Fortuna Project, you don't have a fancy menu unlike Free Mac Boot. To activate Fortuna Project if you have one already, just go to the browser and go into the memory card. You'll see that the data is corrupted, but that's perfectly normal. Just press circle to go back, press circle again, and then you'll be booting into ulaunch.elf. From there, you can navigate back to your memory card, which is MC0. Look for the opl.elf to launch OPL. By the way, if you watch my how to install Fortuna project using free DVD boot, you'll know that I have an ELF file of OPL in the boot folder, but I'll be running OPL this time from the OPL folder. So now it will boot the program. And there you go. We now have open PS2 loader up and running. The first time you open the OPL screen, you may get the settings menu. You may change the USB device start mode to auto and the default menu to USB games so that you may skip these settings. Afterwards, just save this. Go back to your USB games and now after pressing circle, you can just select your games and play. This time, we'll try one of the top PS2 games, which is Shadow of the Colossus. Wait for it to load. And there you go. We have successfully run a game through USB using a Fortuna project memory card with OPL. Let me just show some footage until we get to actually control the character. Afterwards, I'll be resetting the PS2 and show you what happens now that you've saved your settings in OPL. Thank you. 
OK, this time OPL automatically loads your USB games. And this time we choose Marvel vs. Capcom 2. And boom, it's now up and running. It's very easy once you have a Fortuna Project memory card. Now the pro of using a Fortuna Project memory card with OPL is that you can now play game backups through USB. However, the con here is that there are full motion video cutscenes that will be super laggy. This is because the PS2 utilizes the outdated USB 1.1 which makes it slower to read files compared to USB 2.0 or 3.0. There isn't really a fix for this if you want to use a USB flash drive, but you can try running games via SMB or an Ethernet cable, but that's a discussion for another video. And with that, I think we're done. If you found this video helpful, interesting, or entertaining, please leave a like and subscribe to my channel, then hit on that notification bell for more content just like this. Again, I am Zach, and this is GG Fistbump.